Hi, this is Ed Cowlins of Voice of Hope Ministries, Ed Cowlins Voice of Hope, and I am now uh, giving a video blog on Horizons. That's from International Apostolic Ministries. And I did it by video because it's the easiest way for me to communicate my heart of what I was sensing what God is doing. Um, I just want to share uh, a prophetic thing that happened to me last week as I was on my way to Tampa, Florida to minister. Um, flying from Greensboro to Atlanta, then Atlanta to Tampa, I heard the same message three times going over the intercom. Before I left for Greensboro Airport in order for me to go to Tampa, I put on my favorite watch, that my, my, my son's favorite watch that he gave me for Christmas, I thought for my birthday, one of those times. And I usually don't wear it when I travel. But when I was in the Greensboro Airport, after I went through security check, um, I don't know, about 20 steps later afterwards, over to the intercom, I hear these words. Um, Whoever left your watch at security, please return to security to retrieve your watch. Of course, immediately I looked at my wrist and I still had my watch. And then I proceeded my airplane and then from there flew to Atlanta. I got off the Atlanta um, jetway, you know, walking through the terminal to my next gate. And sure enough, another announcement. Whoever left a watch at security checkpoint, please return to security to retrieve your watch. And then I'm like, well, this is pretty strange. And then um, from... Um, Atlanta, you know, got on my plane, Atlanta to Tampa Bay. When I landed in Tampa Bay, sure enough, same thing. Got off the plane on my way to pick up my luggage, and I hear again, someone, please return to security. You left your watch. If you left your watch at security checkpoint, please return. And then immediately, I felt like that was a message either for me or for the body of Christ. And I believe this is something that's very current. You know, um, I believe God wants us to receive our watch that we may have left behind, a watch. And so this is what I mean. There's a whole lot of things that are going on around the world, such as earthquakes, fires, hurricanes, now the mass massacre murder that happened over in um, Las Vegas. All these things really caught my attention and put a lot of fear around the world. And of course, a lot of arguments, a lot of division um, in our nation at this time. Here's what has happened to me. I was really searching the news, is trying to get, you know, as far as some kind of information, not as to why things are going on, but just to simply, you know, just to touch base to what's going on. And the father corrected me. He basically said that I have left my watch. I have left my watch point. And so I feel like God is calling us back to watch. Now, this is what I mean. Um, Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 2, God says, um, On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen all day and all night, and they will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest. And so that's the first scripture that came to my mind. You see, I understand about getting information and how to pray, you know, from the news and how to pray, but I got news for you about the news. A lot of it is absolutely distorted, and I know this firsthand. If we are praying over our nation based upon receiving information off the news, our prayers will be twisted and I believe misguided because we're already operating out of misguided information. Here's what I believe the Father desires us, that we return to our watch. That's Him. That we don't look for what the enemy is doing, but we look for the King of glory, like it says in the book of Isaiah, that our eyes must be looking for the King of glory. So with all the destruction that say happened about the hurricane, yes, I don't like hearing death tolls. That to me, it grieves my heart. But what I'm looking for is God's recovery. You see, with every destruction, there is always some kind of recovery of God whenever God's people pray. So just like, for instance, when Puerto Rico got nailed with the hurricane, um, it absolutely wiped out the entire island. Now, of course, they're showing all the devastation, but my passion now is watching the recovering angels being released for that particular island, for example. What that hurricane did, it exposed a lot of corruption, not only just in the government, but corruption in businesses. So basically that hurricane exposed the corruption. Now recovery can come and, um, and then fix things that what needs to be fixed, 
not the way they were, but fix things in a better state than, than it was before. That's the watch that God wants us to look for. Yes, there is the devil and there are evils around us that we got to pray against. But bottom line is we must pray in what God is doing, not what the devil is doing. Because if we keep looking at what Satan is doing, what happens is we start living in reaction to the enemy instead of response to what God is saying. And those are two different responses, two different things that we, we approach prayer to. Either we approach prayer out of reaction of what evil is going on. Instead, God wants us to watch for him and, and then respond based upon what he is saying. Not react, but we are to respond soberly. I got some more scriptures. Habakkuk 2, 1, it says, I will stand upon my watch and station myself upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say to me. You see, I believe that is a word. Three times in one trip, in one uh, flight over to, uh, to Tampa, return to security and receive your watch. And also goes on to say, Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, watch therefore, watch, watch therefore, and because you know not at what hour does the Lord come. The word watch, I looked it up in the old Webster's Dictionary, it means to keep vigil as a devotional exercise, to be awake during the night. It means to be attentive and vigilant. And to be vigilant, um, it means to honestly to be alert and and, and, and and to be vigilant. And so I just want to encourage us and, and to refresh our hearts. I believe an anointing. There is an anointing upon you for those who are hearing for us to come before the Lord to say, God, recover my watch. Because Jesus even says, watch and pray. Revelations 3, 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Then it goes on, and also it says in Revelation 16, 15, Blessed is he that watch and keeps his garments, lest he walks about naked and expose his shame. So when we stay at watch what God is doing, not what the devil is doing, but we have to watch what God is doing, then we will be clothed with faith. So there's recovering taking place. Three recoveries I'm seeing is faith, hope, and love. I've been preaching this um, you know, since the turn of the year, and if you want me to come to your church, I will. But since faith, hope, and love is being recovered, these are angelic beings that has been uh, sent by God to recover our faith, hope, and love. Now, the other aspect of that announcement, it says return to security checkpoint and receive your watch. And here's another prophetic thing. Return to your security. That's Jesus Christ. Returning to your security of your salvation, security that God loves you, and security that God says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. I, plan, I give you plans to prosper and not to harm you. You see, a lot of us are praying. I'm, I'm going to be honest because I slip into this, and this is nothing but the love of God for the body. I slip into many times in a prayer or even come before the Lord out of insecurity instead of security. Insecurity saying, oh, you know, kind of panic, you know, oh God, you know, that kind of panic prayer. But instead, I believe God wants us to approach him soberly and clearly. And security in the blood of Jesus, my goodness, we ought to look like, especially we are living in the greatest times on earth as believers. We ought to look like a people that is not just going to heaven, but a people that has come from heaven. That's our security. And so the Christian life isn't that I'm going to say, I'm saved that I'm going to heaven. The Christian life is, I am saved, now I'm gonna bring heaven on earth. I talked to a person on the airplane, he was a Christian, and he says, you know, I can't wait till this is all is over with and I could be in heaven to be with Jesus and to live eternity for the rest of my, you know, for my eternal life. And I said, how, might, how badly do you miss heaven? He goes, I miss it a lot. I, I can't wait to go. Then I said, then why don't you bring heaven on earth? Man, that guy stood stunned. He looked stunned in my eyes. I said, you know, if we're missing heaven because we're not seeing heaven on earth, it's our job as believers 
to return to our security. Come on, church, we could do this. Return to our security. That is the blood of Jesus, the plans that God has for us, says the Lord. These plans are to prosper us and not to harm us, to give a hope in the future. And um, so I want to encourage us to watch expectantly for the Lord. So after you come from security, maybe some of us, matter of fact, I know this is another thing that God's recovering. He's recovering the joy of our salvation. Man, that is a great recovery that's, good, that's needed and that is taking place, thank God, in our nation. The recovery of the joy of salvation. And so prepare your heart for how God's going to visit you to recover you the joy of your salvation, not just going to heaven, but bringing heaven on earth. If there's no sickness in heaven, there ought to be no sickness on earth. If there's no strife in heaven, there ought to be no strife on earth. You and I are the ambassadors from our security. Our security is found in the name of Jesus, not how much you know, it's not how much scriptures you memorize, not even how much you pray. It's who you are leaning into of that type of security. So there's going to be a lot more devastation is going to be happening on the earth, but wouldn't it be great if you and I as watchmen hear a clear word from God before a devastation takes place and we pray against it and they will never unfold. Or even I'm going as far as warn the FBI. One of my friends who was a prophet shared with me a story that how he received a certain terrorist attack is going to take place. He received it in a dream as a watchman of God. He called the FBI, and of course, the FBI says, well, how did you get your intelligence? How, what intel? How did you receive this? And he said, I got it in prayer. The FBI guys kind of laughed a little bit, and they said, well, we'll get back to you after receiving his information. They followed up on his dream, and sure enough, it, he nailed it. They were able to stop a terrorist situation because of a dream from a watchman. Remember, church, we pray from security, not insecurity. If you're being insecure about if God loves you or not, or insecure whether you hear God or not, get in His presence. I encourage you to stay strong in His presence. His angels are ready to be, to be released. So instead of watching on the news, that is by far the misguided information that you will ever receive on the planet. If you read the news, you're misinformed, but if you don't read the news, you are uninformed. That was Mark Twain. Mark Twain said that. And so I want you to know, yeah, what, when you watch the news, you be watchful though. Try to get all the truth. But I believe that God wants his people to go before him and enjoy his presence, receive his blueprints, and watch expectantly for the Lord. And I want to end it with this. Micah chapter 7 verse 6. The sons will treat their father contemptuously. Daughters rise up against her mother. Daughters-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies are the members of his household. Of course, Jesus referred to this from Matthew chapter 10 verse 35 and 36. Talking to his disciples. Now, he's not talking to a believer, he's not talking to a crowd, but he's talking to his disciples from Matthew 10, 35. I just read, read you Micah chapter 7 and verse 6. Then in verse 7 of Micah, it says, But as for me, in other words, all the harm that's going to be taking place, as for me, I will watch expectantly for the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. Though I fall, I will rise. Though I dwell in darkness, the Lord is a light for me. So again, I just want to relate this because we are living in crazy, fast forward, really confusion times. Return to your security. Return to, your, to the presence of the Lord. Enjoy his love. Enjoy his presence. And then from there, we pray and we receive our watch. Um, and so I just want to encourage you to receive your watch as you return to security. So I just want to bless you and I pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible even says, 1 Peter 4, 7, be sober and watch into prayer. The word sober means void of speculative imaginations. It doesn't mean sober that I'm not drunk with wine or with alcohol. It literally means being drunk with arguments in your mind that are speculations. And then it says, and then be watchful in prayer. So be sober, 
be free from speculative imaginations, and then watch and pray. 1 Peter 4, 7, and that's backed up with 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but be watchful and be sober. So I decree in the name of Jesus that we'll all come to sobriety, to come to exactly uh, how God is speaking to us about the situations on the earth and return to security, checkpoint, and receive your watch in the name of Jesus. God bless you. This is Ed Callens from Horizons with International Apostolic Ministry. Take care.